Hello everyone. So we have looked at how the random box can give us, you know, some uh, very simple discrete random box can give us a lot of insight into how these diffusive motion happens. And then we also saw how the diffusion equation itself is something that you can be motivated from the random walk point of view, right? And then we managed to make contact between these two. So what I want to do now is uh, in this module, so quickly uh, show you some more arguments ar around this theme, right? It's something that we already seen, but I want to give you some more details. All right. So how did we, you know, so to speak, derive this? We said, oh, so instead of uh, having a you know, discrete motion. Suppose your uh, position could change continuously and let's allow time also to change continuously. So then we allowed, uh, you know, the amount by which uh, your particle moves to the right or to the left to be a random variable L of t, which where, which was only, uh, uh, which was known to have a certain mean, mean which is zero and a variance a squared that's all is known about it and some distribution w of z some reasonable distribution right we did not impose any special forms for this distribution and then we were able to just do a taylor expansion of this probability x of t comma t plus delta t in terms of x minus z and then we assume that you know this the last jump from x minus z to to x could happen in you know for all values of z from minus infinity to plus infinity when theoretically allowed and so of course there is a weight associated with all these jumps so typically you think of w of z to be a sharply peaked function so uh, the possibility of uh, you know very large positive or negative jumps are usually very minimal but the key point here is that you don't give any special forms for w of z. It's a very, very generic uh, distribution function. And then we do a Taylor expansion. And then we see that uh, one of these terms will drop out because we have chosen L of t to have a mean 0. And then uh, we make contact with, you know, an alternate way of getting at p of x comma t plus delta t. So it also can be thought of as uh, p of x comma t plus dou p by dou t delta t using which we get the diffusion equation in 1D and then we generalize this to get a diffusion equation in 3D. And then I claim that the general solution for the diffusion equation is just the Gaussian of this form, right? And so this is where the connection, the contact between, you know, the this continuous uh, version of the problem and the binomial distribution. So we just saw that uh, that there is a way to make connection between the binomial distribution which comes from say you know thinking of a, a scenario where you are repeatedly tossing coins and take using the sterling approximation we saw that there is a way to see that this is a gaussian distribution so here what i want to do here is uh, so i am claiming that this is the this is the solution of a partial differential equation partial differential equations in general are are messy problems to solve, but it turns out that there is a solution available for the diffusion equation. So you can in fact go ahead and do a full brute force approach to solve this problem using the Green's function method and so on. But here what I want to do is actually just quickly verify that this result holds and we can in fact use Mathematica to uh, help us with this. So what I want to do is, first of all, I will just do, uh, I want to check that indeed this is a legitimate probability density right so it must be normalized so of course you can do this integration by hand but this is an opportunity for us to exploit you know some features of mathematica so what i will do is i will use the integrate function so i can just do integrate of 1 over square root of 4 pi times ds i have called it ds times t for diffusion constant time exponential of minus x squared by 4 times ds t and x going from minus infinity to plus infinity, right? So, uh, so this uh, uh, normalization must be equal to one at any given at any point of time, right? It's this whole function is evolving as a function of time, but at any given time, the particle better be somewhere, right? That's what it means. The probability of finding your pa particle at position x at time t is this, 
that means that at every time t the particle better be somewhere right so that's why if you integrate this it has to go to one no matter what time is that's the key point here so if i hit shift enter for this integrate then you'll see that yeah so there you go it, it did complete the integration so but the, so what you see is this conditional expression right so it's it's giving you the answer 1 over square root of ds times t times square root of dst because mathematica does not make any assumptions of, about what ds and t are and we know of course that both ds and t are real and positive right so it makes no sense to think of a diffusion coefficient which is not not positive or not real so for sure ds is positive and real and also time there is no negative time in this problem right so we think of a you know a random walker starts this motion at a certain time and that time is zero and then as a function of time how does this probability distribution vary that's the question we are studying so for for sure we know that both ds and t are real and positive therefore real part of 1 over ds times t is definitely greater than zero therefore this answer is actually nothing but one so this is a, a reassuring result which is what we already expect so next what i want to do is yeah so this is uh, another question here so what about what is the nature of this function if i were to plot this is there some special form this takes it is something that you already probably know it and this is what is called a gaussian right so I, let me do that i'm going to choose ds to be one for the purposes of this exploration and then i'll use the manipulate command um, i will use the manipulate command to allow t to go from 0 0.001 all the way up to 1 right so if i use um, so if i see if i put t to be some relatively small number like t equal to t equal to 0.3 for example or 0.5 or so on you see that it's a gaussian and whose spread keeps on you know it's expanding as a function of time so as i reduce my t and take it to the in the limit of t equal to going going to zero you know mathematica doesn't like to plot this anymore but what is going on here you see that at any given time t i have already shown that this normalization holds doesn't matter what t is but in the limit of t going to zero this whole function keeps on shrinking and in fact at time t equal to zero it becomes what is called a dirac delta function where in fact you know for sure that your particle is at at zero it's not there is no spread in its probability distribution right and so and as you uh, allow it to evolve what what happens is just this this, this uh, very very uh, narrowly peaked function becomes broader and broader and broader but it always remains a gaussian so that's the interesting feature of this diffusion equation right so that was the second exploration that we wanted to do and then third one is also something that just by looking at this already we have some idea of what is going on here so the question is what about the nature of the spread as a function of time so you see clearly that the chances of you know where the particle is located it becomes broader and broader and broader so although the mean always remains zero it's actually i i told you before that the mean is doesn't carry as much information in this problem as the the variance does in fact the the most likely place for your particle is not at the mean after if you spend a time t the particle is very likely to be somewhere which is proportional to square root of t plus plus on the plus side or the minus side that you cannot say but the typical distance between the origin and your particle if a time t has elapsed will go as square root of t that's that's why the variance or the standard deviation is a more important uh, factor in this case rather than the mean right so that's also something that is not a surprise but it's something that we can verify with the help of the visualization here now let's see what about what happens check this let's look at the variance itself using integrate we can actually do the mean so mean of this function is simply given by x times p of x integral from minus infinity to plus infinity once again it gives me a conditional expression and it is zero if 
real part of t is greater than 0. Indeed, real part of t is greater than 0 because t is just time and therefore, the average position of your particle, no matter what the time is, is always 0, right. And then finally, I will just look at the variance turns out to be just the integral of x squared in this case because average position x is, is 0 and we already know that this quantity is is uh, linear in time. It is in fact going to be 2 times t. You can check this. So, the average of x squared for the uh, Gaussian distribution as a function of time goes as is goes linearly in t and in fact it is precisely 2 times t. So, as you can also qualitatively see here as a function of time it is uh, the width of this Gaussian distribution is a measure of its sigma squared and so the, the longer the more the time that elapses the, the greater is the width and in fact it is precisely linear in time with the factor being 2 in this case all of which is something that you should verify. Okay, so you should also do this uh, exercise of uh, plugging in this whole function p, p of x comma t into into this equation here dou p by dou t on the one hand on the left hand side and d times del squared p right. So, del squared p is also something it is a vector uh, second order uh, differential uh, that you have to take. So, you should take it appropriately and check for yourself that what you get on the right hand side is, is the same as on the left hand side. So, that is something that I am leaving it open for you as an exercise, but the other thing things I have already shown you how to visualize these uh, different quantities and show you what it physically means, what is this spread and how it goes as a function of time. Okay, so that is what this module was about. Thank you.